Um, hello, um, I'm JBD. I actually currently now working on the instrumentation team at Google. I used to work on uh, the Go team. Uh, and recently I was uh, specifically focusing on the diagnostic tools. And um, today I will talk about distributed systems observability at Google. Uh, so first, uh, how many of you have heard about observability? Okay, that's a lot, a lot of hands. Um, so since there are many conflicting definitions of this term, I just wanna you know, clarify my definition first. Uh, what I call observability, or we call observability, is this holistic approach uh, to be able to observe systems for um, you know, reliability, performance, uh, deployability, and other um, you know, such uh, properties. Uh, we look at multiple different signals in order to achieve that. Uh, metric collection, distributed tracing, profiling, uh, login are a few of those. Um, so this talk is going to be more about the motivation and the concepts that we came up in the uh, last almost 10 years to make uh, Google production systems more observable. Um, and I will also briefly what we do uh, for Go service, uh, services. So I said signals. Um, I'm not going to favor one signal type to another, um, but rather focus on how we collect things and why we collect them the way we do. Um, this talk is going to mention a lot of metrics, uh, traces, and profiles, but don't assume that these are the only signal types we care about. So to give you a little bit history, um, Google is a dominantly you know, distributed systems company. Um, one of the most common architectural patterns we use is the microservices architecture. Uh, we have thousands of you know, different microservices built and maintained by hundreds of different teams. And being able to you know, observe our systems is a fundamental reason why Google is reliable, fast, and user-friendly. In order to uh, be able to you know, observe our systems, we obviously need to care about um, instrumenting, instrumenting our systems. We invented um, you know, collection and you know, data export, uh, collection and export formats, um, as well as some you know, philosophies in, or in this area uh, to achieve that in our scale. Um, our instrumentation stack cares about efficiency and the overhead of the collection. So observability is a core part of our engineering culture, and uh, we enable it by making it easy and also low overhead. Before digging more uh, into the observ uh, distributed systems observability, I will explain you why uh, it's a little bit more complicated to observe a distributed system. Uh, this is a typical archi uh, architectural diagram for pretty much every product at Google. So we usually have this user-facing, uh, business logic-heavy front-end server um, that depends on various other services. Uh, in this case, you see that like auth, billing, and reporting are those um, immediate services, uh, the front-end servers depending on. And um, it, you know, in this example, all these like uh, relatively low-level services depend on. Uh, Spanner and eventually hitting the blob store uh, for persistency. In any microsystems architecture, it is expected uh, some of the services are becoming a common dependency, like the blob storage or Spanner. Uh, when the rest of the company is depending on blob storage, it is harder for this team to gather meaningful you know, metrics and profiles and so on. Um, it's hard for them to tell the root cause of the problems uh, that is triggered by, by their users. Um, so, you know. Blob storage team will see some fluctuations in their dashboards, but may have a hard time actually breaking down the data and figuring out where the problem is originated at. It's also, um, you know, worth to uh, mention it's not only when the things are obviously going wrong. Infrastructure teams often want answers uh, to be able to just say that you know things are going right. Uh, some of the example uh, questions they want to ask about their systems are. You know, hey, are we meeting the SLO uh, for the spanner team as the blob storage team? Are we providing them, you know, a good enough service, uh, the service we promise to serve? Or, you know, what is the impact of this high-level service on the blob storage service? Or what happens if this product grows, you know, 10% overnight? Uh, is the blob storage deployment going to be able to scale? Um, and, you know, what are the, um, what are the next steps for us? Um, this is... The, the, uh, this is why we want to be able to break down our signals in various different ways. Uh, we call these various different ways dimensions. 
and uh, with dimensions you can query the collected data um, in you know ways that will help you to answer some of these questions. Um, you can query, for example, you know, you can say, uh, give me the blob storage request latency distribution for RPCs originated at Google Analytics front end server. Or uh, you can say, give me all these traces um, and reports that contains this specific RPC. Or um, give me the CPU profile for this specific library. Um, but only uh, for the RPCs, you know, the cost uh, we have seen uh, observed uh, for RPCs started at Google Analytics. So it's it's great that you know that we now can query this data, but how do we actually, you know, collect uh, the signals in order to be able to query the data this way and you know break down uh, the diagnostics data by multiple dimensions? Uh, the answer is we record. Uh, the data with various key value pairs. Uh, we call these key value pairs tags at Google. Uh, and then the, the backend, um, for example, if it's a monitoring backend such as Prometheus, can filter the data by tags. So the entire promise of microservices is, um, you know, there should be no tight coupling between different services. Uh, but then, you know, how can a low-level service such as the blob storage service um, can tag correctly, um, you know, if they don't know anything about the uh, about its dependence and their you know business cases. Um, this is where we get some help from the world of context propagation. So t the tags are produced at high-level services such as the Analytics front-end server, and then passed uh, all along um, to the low-level services as a part of the RPC. Uh, you can see that from all the way bottom, uh, all the way up to the bottom, you can see the RPCs are tagged. So blob storage actually doesn't know uh, anything, but um, it records uh, with the incoming tags. Uh, so it, the data we collect at blob store has all these dimensions. Uh, so we have a culture of producing tags at the high level services, uh, depending on you know specific requirements of the teams, um, and we propagate these tags uh, all across with um, RPCs, then each component in the system uh, can record, you know, metrics, profiles, etc., with the incoming tags. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have a, you know, holistic approach because each signal type is useful uh, to answer a different question. For example, uh, distributed traces are not able to tell you about CPU hotspots, or CPU samples cannot tell us about the end-to-end -end latency problems. Um, so we collect, you know, various sig signals, examine the problem from, you know, various different, with various different perspectives. Um, it is, we, we you know, it sh we shortly realize that it's very hard for our developers to think about all these dimensions, signal types, and build highly efficient instrumentation libraries and instrument each layer they depend on. Uh, that's why we uh, built um, a common framework and decided to, you know, open source it uh, lately and make it vendor agnostic so that everybody can use it against any uh, uh, provider. Uh, recently, we announced that we are uh, our project um, Open Census. Uh, this is a new holistic instrumentation framework. Uh, it's in inspired by uh, Google's internal census project. Uh, the Main reason uh, we are open source in this is we want to fill that missing building block in the open source world. We want, you know, libraries, frameworks, and all sorts of infrastructure projects to be able to instrument without having to depend on any vendor, and without you know having to reinvent these concepts. So um, we also want to you know help other organizations uh, to adopt these solutions because they, we already have built them, or you know you can use Open Census as a reference implementation. So Open Census provides a single set of libraries. Uh, currently, we have a tag library, metrics, uh, and traces. And we will have more in the future. Um, we have uh, language support for Go, Java, C++ right now. There are more uh, languages are coming. Um, Python, PHP, JavaScript, C Sharp, and Erlang are the next. Um, our libraries are vendor agnostic and can upload data to any backend. Uh, we have support for uh, Prometheus, Zipkin, Jaeger, and some APM vendors. Um, and some of the APM vendors actually want to, you know, utilize these libraries rather than inventing their own libraries. Uh, we provide out-of-the-box instrumentation uh, for some, you know, frameworks such as gRPC or, you know, common HTTP um, 
um, libraries like NetHTTP package, for example. Um, also, you know, li our libraries provide some introspection and can, can render a tiny dashboard to report the usage from a single process. Uh, without having to really rely on an actual you know, external service, you can see what is going on uh, in a single process. It is extremely useful if you know that you know, the problem is coming from one specific process or you, know, you can use it during uh, development time. So speaking of uh, framework integrations, uh, I'm going to like give a little bit um, of snippets from uh, our gRPC integration. Um, at Google, we are also responsible for uh, our internal gRPC stubby uh, observability. So these integrations will be used internally uh, all across um, at Google too. Um, you need to import our plugin and pass it as a stats handler to the uh, gRPC client and servers. Uh, in this case, we are looking at a server, but it's pretty much similar for the client. And then in the handler, you can extend the incoming tags uh, from the incoming context. In this case, I'm just you know inserting hello as an originator ser service and inserting the user ID. So it will be possible to break down all the you know collected data uh, at the even at the very low level uh, services by originator and user ID. So this is how you record values. Um, I have a measure here, uh, total hello, that represents the number of times we said hello. Um, stats record will say one uh, with the tags in the current incoming context. So you will be able to tell uh, the number of hellos by you know, originator service and by specific user. Um, then in your dashboard, it looks like this. You break, the, you know, down, uh, you break down the data by dimensions. Uh, the baby blue here is uh, representing the total number of hellos from RPCs originated at the out service. And the purple one is coming from billing, for example. And two other colors are representing uh, the other originators. Uh, the gRPC plugin also automatically creates traces uh, for incoming and outgoing RPCs, but you can also add custom spans uh, using the trace package. Um, here we, have, um, we, we are creating a custom child and finishing it. And then you know you can create as many spans you want uh, and annotate them. Uh, just propagate the context, and whoever's you know starting new spans um, from that context will be able to trace the existing um, trace. So um, here's an example of the you know the output, like uh, all the traces collected for an RPC. You can see the internal RPCs uh, made in order to satisfy the original incoming request. Um, Open Census also provides support for pprof. Um, if you use tag, our tag package, uh, you can collect CPU samples uh, with the tags inside the incoming context, and then you can see, you know, the hotspots uh, for specific, you know, requests, RPCs, and whatever you have uh, put in your tag tags. Um, this is an RPC uh, um, gRPC server I profiled uh, with Open Census. Um, we are looking at a typical you know, visualization from pprof uh, data. Uh, you, you can see the runtime concat strings spend uh, 9.43 seconds for RPCs coming from authentication and 3.20 uh, seconds for the RPCs coming from the analytics service. So uh, let me focus on some of the core principles we have. Um, one of our goals is to make instrumentation as much as possible without our engineers thinking too much about the cost. Uh, that's why we have this like separation between instrumentation and collection. Um, instrumentation is very cheap, actually, if you don't have to collect. So rather than collecting all the metrics, uh, we defer it uh, user to turn on the collection. Um, the instrumentation bits are always there uh, and have all, you know, almost have zero impact on the critical path. And then the, you know, the end user can decide what to collect. Uh, this allows you know, libraries to instrument without thinking too much about it and then they provide their measures and the end user can enable collection. Um, the collection not, it requires explicit enabling, but this is also true for disabling. Uh, it allows us dynamically enable disable collection in production. Uh, for example, imagine a, you know, a compression library that is instrumented to measure uh, the compressed chunks. Um, until you are suspicious about this library, you may never need metrics coming from this measure. Uh, but when you do, you can dynamically enable it in the production and start receiving metrics. Um, so observing becoming very easy when you have a static uh, list of things to observe, but systems are always surprising you. You cannot really, you know, um, you cannot predict what you should observe. Uh, that's why we encourage a model that you can dynamically expand the collection. 
Uh, with simple, expensive, and large data, uh, everything that is cheap um, to collect um, and aggregatable doesn't have to be, you know, sampled. Um, examples of sample signals are um, traces, for example, because they are large. Uh, profiles because they are expensive. Um, on the other hand, um, we may aggregate and you know in efficient ways and produce cheap and small data to avoid sampling. Uh, this is what we do for metric collection, for example. So we don't have to like sample metrics at all. Uh, it is great because you, then you can see you know your 19th, 99th percentile. Um, I was repeating that the data size uh, could be a reason why we aggregate or sample data. Uh, one of the other things is we want to limit the outband uh, bandwidth spent on data collection. So for signals that are aggregatable, like metrics, we try to aggregate them inside the process or um, in a, an agent living near the process uh, to reduce bandwidth. Um, at Google, we try to use the same instrumentation libraries uh, nowadays to provide, you know, black box instrumentation. For example, a trace uh, started at a load balancer, um, you know, can be started at a load balancer. Then our engineers can use the same libraries to, you know, add more spans uh, to that trace. Um, so, you know, similar to our microservices framework, uh, gRPC provides tags in a core set of instrumentation out of the box. So it's easy for our engineers to, you know, to facilitate what is already there and build on top of that, uh, rather than thinking about instrumentation from very scratch. Uh, one of the useful tools we had, have at Google is the, uh, the introspection pages, uh, served from the servers. Um, you can imagine this introspection pages as a small backend that collects and visualizes data. Uh, this we don't have great CSS right now because you know distributed systems engineers don't know CSS much, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can contribute. Um, you know, it's a great useful tool to understand what is happening in the process without really depending on a, a back end. Uh, also, you know, as I mentioned, it's great for development time. Uh, you see the traces page here. Um, there's a small dashboard that displays the spans with different names and, you know, just displays the latency distribution. Uh, you can see the details for 10 sample traces for each bucket and the errored one. So it gives you some detailed, uh, you know, keep just a small sample in memory uh, and you can get more uh, to understand what is wrong. To summarize, um, we have a holistic approach. Uh, we use multiple signal types. Um, tags allow us to break down uh, our data by dimension so each team can produce them and pass them to the low level services as a part of their RPCs. Uh, we instrument our core frameworks and, you know, load balances and service meshes out of the box. Uh, users, you know, automatically get a lot of uh, out of the box instrumentation. Um, and then, you know, they can use the same libraries to add fine grained details, just like the case in the gRPC, you know, server uh, handler where I was creating custom spans. Um, our, you know, instrumentation library is um, optimized to be low overhead and low cost. Uh, it makes it you know, easier for libraries and frameworks to instrument without thinking too much about the cost. Um, I, I can say that like, once you adopt these concepts and put them in place, uh, it gives you a good foundation layer. Um, Open Census is already available today and um, is vendor agnostic. We already support uh, Prometheus, Jaeger, uh, Zipkin and more, uh, and more exporters are coming soon. So I really highly encourage you to t you know, take a look and you know, give us feedback and contribute. And that's all. Thank you.